from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Hi every, uh, everyone, uh, we're welcome back. Uh, this is George Gilbert, we're at uh, Silicon Valley um, Big Data. Uh, this is uh, running alongside uh, Strata and Hadoop World. And we have a very special guest with us today, Kostas Tsumas. For those in the know, uh, he's the key guy be behind Data Artisans, which is the company that is uh, behind um, Flink, which is on everyone's tongue, uh, sort of where Spark was a couple years ago. Um, welcome. Costas. Hi, nice to be here, sir. So tell us, um, give us a little background on the company, how it got started, the mission, where you are in funding, mm -hmm. um, so we get a sense of you know where you are in the life cycle. Yeah, so the company is actually pretty new. We started Data Artisans um, about one and a half years ago, uh, when we basically saw the need uh, for a very high performance uh, stream processor uh, in the market, so there was a certain gap, at least in the open source space. Uh, so we started one and a half year ago with uh, with a seed financing round from uh, from a European VC B two B partners, uh, and actually yesterday we announced our Series A round uh, led by Intel Capital. Intel Capital. Exactly. Okay, oh, they don't get much more blue chip than that. <laughs> so all right, so tell us, stream processing has been on the top of everyone's mind. Absolutely. Let's let's start at the top. Why is stream processing so topical now? One, what's made it possible for, for it to be such focus, and then why is it so relevant? So if you ask me, actually, um, I wonder why stream processing hasn't been around for, for a long time. Okay. Yeah? So to me, stream processing actually enables the obvious, which is continuous analytics on data that is produced continuously. So if you look at most interesting data sets out there, they're not static. They don't have a beginning and an end, right? They are uh, enriched and their records are added and there's new events coming up all the time, right? So look at user behavior, uh, click streams, logs, uh, sensors, readings from, from sensors, et cetera, et cetera. So the very logical thing is to actually do the analytics on these continuous data sets continuously. Uh, now, the funny thing is that uh, until recently, the, the assumption of all the tools uh, in the infrastructure was that data has a beginning and an end, what people used to call sort of bots. Yeah? So I think what is different now is that, number one, the rate of change is much higher. So especially with new uh, data sets coming in, like Internet of Things uh, and you know, uh, lots of user activity, the rate of, the rate of change is much higher. Uh, and uh, a lot of companies want to move to real-time decisions uh, on demand, so they, they really want to you know, give answers to the customers uh, immediately, without delay. Is it, is it fair to say that we've sort of had two modes of computing for 50, 60 years, like batch or request response, meaning the online? That's right. And so, I mean, this, this need for continuous processing, I mean, it's been around for a while. What made it really sort of take off? Was there some catalyst for it that you can identify? So. Like, like every technology, um, a lot of companies have been doing this for a while. Uh, so a lot of this comes from companies like uh, Google or LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Amazon, etc., that have embraced this for a while. Uh, banks have been doing this for a while, and telcos. Uh, and now the rest of the world is following. So, this, so now stream processing is becoming extremely mainstream in the, in the whole enterprise. And I think one of the key factors is the maturity of the open source uh, software for stream processing. So until now, uh, the open source tools were not, were not as mature, if you wish, as their batch processing counterparts. But now, uh, this is actually changing. There are a lot of uh, open source projects out there, including Apache Flink uh, that we're developing, uh, Apache Kafka, Apache Beam that recently came out of Google that, that are basically pushing this level of maturity uh, to the point that they can cover all data processing with streaming. So, okay, give us a, a, a nice concise example of how you would um, go about uh, well, using stream processing in conjunction with a, a broader, you know, application, and then what that might look like, you know, if you go about it for batch processing, because, I mean, programmers would know that, but maybe not all our audience would. Sure. 
So I would like to actually take an extremely simple example. I will actually be talking about this, uh, the Strata conference right after I live here. Uh, and that is counting, yeah? So we want to count things, things like, you know, uh, social media analytics, uh, user, user behavior, uh, aggregations on metrics on infrastructure, like logs, et cetera, things like, uh, uh, things like that. Uh, so, you know, let's say that we want to do continuous counting. Doing that with, with batch tools is possible, yeah, and people have been doing things with Hadoop and Spark and other tools, but it's very problematic. So you need to glue together a bunch of systems, you need to write out files, and then, you know, hopefully you schedule a job that hopefully starts when this file is ready, hopefully finishes when the next file is ready, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very brittle, there are too many moving parts. Uh, the, it's, you know, the, you cannot do much. This, these boundaries between these, these batches that you schedule are very rigid. It's unclear what is in the first boundary and what is in the second. And, and this becomes just natural and simple with stream processing because the only thing you, you need is actually a stream processor and all the, the important code about the application is actually in the stream processing program, it's not uh, scattered around a bunch of systems and DevOps, et cetera. Okay, so you've set us up with a good example. Now tell us, the whole world's you know, now focused on Spark. It's the shiny new toy. And within Spark, everyone's focused on Spark streaming as, this, as the answer to this need for continuous you know, computation and analysis. Help position um, Flink against Spark you know, what are the sweet spots? When, when should you use one, when should you use the other? Or is, one, is Flink so much better that, you know, others, that people should sort of mig migrate to that? Yeah. Well, I'm obviously biased, right? But, uh, <laughs> That's so, okay. Um, so the way I see it is the following. So both Spark and Flink um, share a commonality, that they are both very broad. They want to cover a lot of types of analytics. So in Flink, we're not doing only stream processing. We're also doing batch processing. Uh, we're also doing a bit of machine learning. We're also doing graph analytics. Spark, the same thing. Uh, so this is the commonality. But, but that said, uh, its project uh, has its, you know, uh, really strong points, and, and the market is usually focusing on, this, on the strong points. Uh, so, so Flink uh, is a true stream processor in the sense that you can do event at a time analytics with, with very low latency, a few milliseconds. Yeah? So you can get an event and immediately publish an alert on that. Uh, you, can do, uh, you can do very, very rich uh, stream analytics uh, that actually take into account that the streams uh, that you are getting in do not arrive in order. So things that you cannot very easily do with, with other stream processors. So I would say the, the really strong point uh, for Flink and where we see most of the adoption is uh, companies that, uh, for, we, for which streaming is not just a little add-on. So if you're doing like a lot of Spark and you want to do a little bit of ingestion, uh, then you probably would like to do that in the same framework. Yeah? But if, the, if stream processing is really at the core of your infrastructure, uh, then you really you need a, a proper high-performance stream processor. Do we need, if, if people are really to take advantage of continuous processing and, and stream processing, do they need to rethink how they build their applications end to end? Or is it just like uh, how one part might communicate with another part? So there, there is a level uh, of rethinking um, in the infrastructure from um, storage to compute. So there, there are two main differences. So you need, so with streaming you embrace the fact uh, that Let's say the ground truth um, is the history of the world. So it is all the events that have come since the beginning uh, until now. And it is not, let's say, the state of the world. So you're not trying to capture the state of your business right now, of your whole business. But your ground truth is, is the history. And then every isolated application, microservice, etc., is building its own uh, local state. That is the first thing. And the second thing that you need to embrace with streaming is uh, the explicit management of time. So, so a lot of these things are time series. So inside the application code, uh, you actually need to define things like time windows uh, and say that I would like to aggregate you know, the last 10 minutes worth of data. So this is now part of your application code. You're managing it in the application. I would say that these are the two main things. So it, it, it will take a little bit of education for people to get there, uh, but, but it is happening. And you know, once people do that, they realize that it is actually a very, very natural way to interact with data. Okay, so in the last 20 seconds that we have, 
tell us what we should expect from Flink uh, and data artisans over the next 18 to 24 months? All right, yeah, so that's, that's a very good question. Uh, so we're working on a lot of stuff on Flink. So, uh, for example, we're, we're working now uh, finally on adding SQL on both static and continuous data sets. Okay. Uh, we're working uh, on making Flink programs uh, scale dynamically and respond uh, to what is happening uh, in the input streams in the world. Uh, and, I mean, you can see all that stuff in the roadmap. It's actually, there, there's a lot of features. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously from data artisans, we're growing a lot, we're growing the team. Uh, we have uh, our primary location is in Berlin. Uh, in Germany, we have people here, we're growing both locations, so Berlin and San Francisco. Uh, we are going to offer a lot more uh, to Flink users um, and generally take the project uh, way, way forward. All right. Um, Kostas Sumas, great to have you here. Um, Flink uh, and Data Artisans, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from you. Um, we're in uh, San Jose at uh, Big Data Silicon Valley, um, running concurrently with Strata and Hadoop World. This is George Gilbert. We'll be right back after a short break. Thank you.